You are listening to the Bright Life Podcast, all about ways to stay inspired, chase your dreams, and find more gratitude in the highs and lows of the journey. I'm your host, Jessica Johnson. I'm a business owner, a part-time digital nomad, a self-growth junkie, a believer in other big-hearted women, and am all about sharing tips, tricks, lessons learned, and encouragement so we can all live our biggest, brightest lives. You ready? Let's do this. Hello, how are you? Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. I'm really excited to share something that I recently read about that I have been thinking about nonstop ever since. And I think it can be really supportive to you if you have this dream in your life or you are feeling like you are wondering where it is and when it's gonna come. Uh, Maybe it will give you a different perspective on what it will look like and how it will arrive and you may even realize that some of the dreams that you are waiting for and expecting to come in a certain way may already be here and you may not even know it. So let's dive in for today. Thank you again for making time today. I'm so excited to be here with you. So I was recently reading a chapter, as I mentioned, in a book before bed one night and it was talking about the essence of the things that we desire. So you know how whenever you come up with something that you want in your life, you probably have this picture of what it's gonna look like or how it's going to come to be. So for example, if it's a relationship, maybe when you were calling in your dream love or relationship, maybe you had a very specific idea of what your partner would be like or would look like or would sound like or would act like. And maybe sometimes you even surprise yourself by liking certain people that weren't like that at all. Like haven't you had stories of this from friends or family or maybe even in your own love story where you end up being with someone or being really attracted to someone who was nothing like what you expected, right? Or maybe on paper, um, you know, you'd go on dates with other people who checked all the boxes, but they, there was something about it that was not a connection for you. So what you were probably doing there that you weren't even aware of is you had an idea about the essence of what you were looking for. So I remember even back in my dating days, at one point I really got tired of having this visual of the kind of person that I wanted to date. And so I relaxed around it. I just decided that I was going to um, enjoy being in New York. I was going to enjoy traveling. I was going to enjoy just being in my 20s. And instead of focusing on what the right person would be like, I started to instead envision how the relationship would feel, how the right relationship would feel. So I imagined like how we would talk to each other, what it would feel like to be in a relationship that was loving and kind and genuine and supportive and that there weren't games and all these things. And I really started to lean into that more than the specifics. And what shocked me is that is when I started to really shift the kind of people that I was dating and even being interested in. And the right people who started to match that description came into my life. And I didn't even really know what I was doing. You know, maybe it's similar for you with a career or with work. I know for me, when I first started my entrepreneurial journey, I had a specific idea of what I thought it had to look like or the kind of business I thought I needed to create to be successful. And the longer you're in business or entrepreneurship, the longer you'll hear people talk about that, where at first you feel like you have to do it this certain way and do everything exactly right in order to build a successful business. And the further on you get, the more you realize there's a lot of gray areas and there's a lot of ways to build something that you love by being yourself and by doing things in a way that brings you joy. But in the beginning, I thought that I had to have this business and I thought I had to push so hard to get the one that I started with to fit this model. 
where in reality, when I took a step back and I looked at the things that I really desired when starting a business, so the essence of the business, I knew and I realized that I wanted things like location freedom, to be able to be flexible working from anywhere. I knew I wanted to have fulfillment, where I felt like I was passionate doing something that was meaningful to me. I knew I wanted to feel like I was making a difference somehow and bettering people's lives in some way through my own gifts and passions. You know, I knew that I wanted to make an income that felt like I wasn't just scraping by, but felt like I was in overflow and could give to causes I cared about and do things that I loved and live this life of my dreams. So there were all of these things that were the essence of what I was looking for, even if I was being so precise and forcing so hard this vision of how I thought it had to come to be. And for those of you who know any of my story, you know that my first business model was much more built around one-on-one private coaching. Um, And once I relaxed around that and started to really get back to the essence of what I wanted is when I realized I kind of had a lot of it through freelance writing. I realized that I loved the days I got to be creative, that I got to work from anywhere, that I got to choose any time of day to work, that I got to do projects that I loved, you know, and All of these things, if you hear those, all of these things are part of what I was really looking for from the beginning, but forcing in another path. And I say all of that to just paint this picture and get your brain going of maybe there's an area in your life, whether it's your business, your career, or anything else, where... And you tell me, is there an area where you feel like you have had this checklist of things that have to happen or the way it has to look when when you take a step back, you can realize that what you were looking for all along is maybe in your life already in a different way, right? Or maybe you have been asking for an opportunity that gives you more freedom and more flexibility or more fulfillment, but you were picturing it coming in another way. And yet, if you really look around, you realize that there's all these opportunities presenting to themselves to you in your email inbox or any, you know, in things that you're seeing on sales pages or in conversations at networking events or anything like that, where maybe they are that opportunity and you didn't even realize it was right in front of you. How cool is that, right? Like maybe even with the relationship example we had early in this episode, Maybe you have a relationship in your life that's exactly what you were wanting and hoping and you didn't even realize it because it looked different than how you thought it might. What a gift to have those moments of realization, right? When you are sitting in your own life and all of a sudden you realize that the thing that you've been praying for or asking for, hoping for, is actually right in front of you and it just takes a perspective shift to even notice it and appreciate it. So I want to offer you a few ways to get clear on the essence of something. And I'm sure there's many ways to do this, but one that I'm familiar with is from Joe Dispenza, who is an author and he teaches a lot on quantum physics. And he's one of my all time, you know, favorite people um, in the world to learn from. What he helped me do once at one of his um, conferences is you first get clear on a few components of whatever your dream is. So for example, when I was thinking about the career, I walked you through some of the things. I knew that I wanted a way to make a difference. That was one of the things. I knew I wanted flexibility in my location and my schedule, more than I had in corporate. You know, I knew that I wanted to um, do work that I was passionate about, that felt fulfilling. So for example, for you, um, if it's a relationship, is it a relationship where you have healthy communication with each other? Is it a relationship where you make each other laugh? right? Those aren't necessarily feelings, but they're kind of like the architectural plans of whatever you're trying to call in. So whether it's a career or a relationship or a home or a position or a city, what is kind of, what does it look like? Like what are the bones of this thing? And choose like three to five things that really describe what this ideal situation is for you. Then Do the same thing, but apply it to feelings. So choose a few feelings that you will have when that career, relationship, side business, location, offer, whatever it may be, comes into being. 
So for example, with the business, I pictured feeling fulfilled. I pictured feeling free, successful, proud, like joyful, abundant, right? So I probably said more than five right there, but I would choose the five strongest words. You know, in a relationship, maybe you feel safe, connected, um, joyful could be another one. I'm trying to think of other ones for you, but you can have any that apply for your own relationship, right? Um, if it's a city that you want to live in or a home that you're trying to find, maybe the words are inspired, um, electric, you know, cozy, comforted, like relaxed, grounded. But get clear on what those words feel like. And then what you want to do is Go about your day just trusting that that opportunity is going to find you and you can lean into the feelings of it more and more. So for example, with the relationship for me, once I knew that I wanted to feel like I was connected, like I was loved, like I was cared for, like I was um, happy and joyful, like all of these things, I was able to go and get the feeling before the relationship ever came into form. I was able to find those words with my friends, with my colleagues, with my family, with people that I would just meet randomly in coffee shops, right? Like the barista I could have a moment of just friendship and connection with. Um, And so all of a sudden I started to just live from this place that wasn't like this lack-based place where I was waiting for the thing that I wanted, but I started to feel it all around me. And I started to get really safe and comfortable feeling those emotions because that's something too, right? Where sometimes you are almost afraid of these really beautiful emotions in your life. And so you kind of have to get your nervous system regulated before you can actually accept that thing and not sabotage it. So I think that there's just such a beautiful thing about being able to experience whatever you desire now once you get clear on what the feelings are. So for you, if there's a business that you imagine where you feel more free, more powerful, more fulfilled, more passionate, more creative, how can you draw those words in now? How can you find opportunities where you feel more creative? Maybe it's taking a class. Maybe it's doing some art at the end of the day. Maybe it's reading again or writing. Maybe there's areas in your life where you can pursue networking events that make you feel ambitious or draw that out in you. Maybe you can start to pursue things in your own day job where you feel more fulfilled, more successful, right? Maybe you even just start talking to yourself in a different way and watching the self-talk that's more negative and instead shifting it to talk that's more empowering. So there's so many ways that you can draw this in in your own life, but again, it starts to let you enjoy the feeling and have it be here now before you ever get that far off desire in the future. And it also helps you recognize that desire when it does come. The other really interesting part about this is, you know, we've talked about how when you start thinking different thoughts, it inspires different emotions in your body and those different emotions make you take different actions. Those different actions are what lead to different results. And so it starts to make sense why whatever your desire is, is going to come in a way that you least expect it. Because as you start leaning into the emotions and the feelings of it, They're gonna cause you to take different actions. Those actions are gonna create this cascade of different results. And lo and behold, there's your desire in a way that you never saw from the vantage point of where you're at now. Because once you start taking different actions and feeling different feelings, you are naturally going to create a different result. Does that make sense? It's a little technical, but once I got this, my mind was just blown and all of a sudden I wasn't so nervous and suspect about things that came into my life in a way that I didn't expect them or that looked different or that came in different packaging than what I expected. But instead I was like, ah, of course they are because everything that I've been doing up until now has been about feeling different things and leaning into the feeling of them here now. And so of course, that's led me to take different classes, to be in different rooms, to meet different people. And it's brought about opportunities and results that I never could have pictured six months from now or a year from now when I was not feeling the emotions, not taking the actions, not getting the different results, okay? So I wanna just leave this with you today for 
hopefully one, some encouragement for maybe there's parts of your life now that you already have the thing you desire and you just never even saw it right in front of you. Or two, if you have a desire that feels far off, to get a little bit more clear on what it actually, like what the container is, what it really looks like, what what's a part of it, the non-negotiables, and then what it feels like. So three to five words that describe what it feels like and to lean more into those and to bring this thing into your life really by getting clear, not so much on the checklist or the resume or the specifics, but on its essence and on what you truly actually want out of something anyway. So I hope this is helpful to you. Send me a DM on Instagram and let me know if it is, like if this clicks in some way for you. I'm always curious because sometimes I learn these things and as I'm practicing them in my own life, I'm like, does this actually resonate for someone else? Does this make sense yet? Or is this, you know, teachable yet? Or is this something I'm still processing? So I would just love to hear if this does connect with you, um, if it does offer some perspective or hope, which is always what I'm trying to bring to you. So thank you so much for being here and I look forward to talking with you again next Thursday. If this episode resonated with you, I have two things you are going to love. One is a Bright Life workbook full of practices you can use to get clear on what your version of your brightest life looks like and fearlessly move towards it every day. And another is a copywriter starter kit full of beginning steps to create a copywriting business that gives you the freedom to travel the world working from anywhere, to replace a corporate salary as your own boss, and to do creative work that lights you up every day. It's lessons I've learned in creating my own content business, and I'm excited to share it with you if you're curious about doing the same. I will link these in the show notes. I hope these serve you. Thank you so much for listening, and I will see you back here next week as we all pursue our biggest, brightest lives together.